Okay, so we're going to now be thinking about investments. So this is another one that's a little bit unusual. So we started off with the most common type of thing, us making payments, or these are outflows that we've been talking about in general. You can set up the bank feeds most easily for paying things that you pay electronically, like the telephone, utility, and so on and so forth. We talked about the fact that paying for inventory could quite likely complicate things because it's a deviation to an accrual kind of component. And we talked about the payment for things like equipment, large purchases, also something you have to be careful of. Another one that we've got to kind of watch out for is if we were trying to track our investments, putting money into say stocks and bonds or an investment account in some way, shape or form. Now, if you're a small business, if you're doing this for like a, a schedule C or something like that, it's likely that you do not generally want like your investments, your personal investments in your business account, because the general idea is that we're trying to separate business uh, from the personal. Now, there might be some exceptions to that. If you're a small business, you're just doing some gig work or something and you want one QuickBook file that does everything, you might be able to use class tracking or tags or something like that to get what you need to do the basic tax return at the end of the year from like a Schedule C using those methods. But the general idea is that we would like to separate in some way, shape or form, usually with two separate accounts, checking accounts if possible, and two separate QuickBooks files as, if possible on the business and personal uh, side of things. That said, it is quite possible to use QuickBooks for personal accounting. It's the same thing. It's just that there's a different objective. The objective is not simply revenue ge generation. The objective is to live well. So you don't have that same, it's a little bit more difficult in that way to deal with your personal finances because on the business side, you have that general kind of driving thing, which is competition and, and trying to generate revenue versus the personal uh, side of things. But the same double entry accounting system will work in either method. So on your business side of things, then it's possible that a business would want to take some of their excess cash and instead of giving it to the owner in the form of a draw for a sole proprietorship or dividend for a corporation, they want to hold on to it because they think in the future they're going to save up and purchase something like equipment in the future within the business. So you might think about like Apple, for example, trying to save up having a bunch of cash because they're going to they're going to try to uh, open up a new plant in some location that's not under like a communist regime or something like that, you know, and so they might try to save up money to do that. If there is no plan for the business to to then uh, invest, you would think that the business would take the cash that they've built up through operations and give it to owners because the only reason the investments are in the business is because the business is thought to be able to get a better return through the investment in inventory and equipment then you can get elsewhere if you took the money out of the business and invested in say stocks and bonds uh, or something like that so if you have the money in the business you would have you would think like short-term type investments or you might be investing in some ways in like a benefit plans like a 401k plan or something like that but the you have similar rules if you're trying to do quickbooks for the personal side of thing uh, where you're trying to actually track your investments kind of in a balance sheet type of format now in that case note that there's a difference between what you want to use like a quickbooks software for and what you might want to use other finance software for so for example you might use like a personal capital or i think uh, quicken which is different than quickbooks has the capacity to pull in the end balances from your financial institutions and that would include banking uh, balances that would include credit card balances that would include investments oftentimes in, in stocks and bonds and possibly even loans like mortgages and whatnot and gives you that gives you a great snapshot based on these financial institutions that you're working with for your personal finances but remember that's not what quickbooks does quickbooks pulls in the detail the detail for the checking account and possibly other accounts as well so that you can record the information necessary to create the story of the income statement, right? We want to we want to see the income statement story. So you don't want to think about QuickBooks as the place you're going to go for like day to day kind of ups and downs in the market to record that kind of stuff or to record just the balance sheet created from the ending balances, which you can use other software to do. What you want to do is be able to set up QuickBooks so that you can adjust it fairly uh, quickly 
to give you a nice snapshot on the balance sheet and generate an income statement, a story of what is going on. So from the cash side of things, of course, because cash is part of our normal business operations or personal operations on the personal side, we want to take all the information that's going through the checking accounts and record it through uh, our, our bank feeds. And that'll, that'll intertwine with all the other cycles in the business, the customer cycle, uh, the, the vendor cycle and the employee cycle, if there is an employee cycle. When we have investments in like stocks and bonds, obviously we're just kind of holding on to the stocks and bonds and we're gonna have to make periodic adjustments to those investments in, into the stocks and bonds, possibly for the earnings that have been made, such as interest and dividends. So therefore we want, we want like investment accounts that aren't too detailed because I wanna dive into the detail with possibly my investment companies like a Vanguard or an E-Trade or something like that. I can look at the day-to-day -day activity and charts and that kind of stuff there. And I can get just a snapshot balance sheet with something like a personal capital. I just want to recap it with all my other data in QuickBooks here and basically adjust it periodically. So what we're going to do then is we're, I'll set up a couple accounts and this will be similar again if you're doing this for your own business or if you're doing it like for your personal QuickBooks, there's similar kind of problems that we'll have to deal with. 